This is the MakerHawk battery capacity tester. This thing is really cool. I just bought this on Amazon. I paid 45 bucks for it. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description if you wanna pick one of these up. But this is great for if you just bought a brand new battery, you wanna make sure that you actually get the capacity that you paid for, like this 100 amp hour BioNO battery that I just tested. I tested it and it, I got just over 102 amp hours out of it, so I got over what is advertised. Or if say you have an older battery like this, this is a 10 amp hour battery that I built back in 2018. And when I first bought this, I tested it and it tested a little over 10 amp hours of capacity. After five years, I just tested and got uh, 9.7 amp hours out of it. So still 97% capacity out of this battery after five years of use. Another thing you can use this for, this is a early prototype of a Denco battery. This is actually supposed to be a seven amp hour battery. This was built in November of 2020 and I wasn't getting the full capacity so I ran a test on this. Ended up not working at all because the BMS failed. This went down to like eight and a half volts I noticed. So I shut the test off. I checked the cells. They're all imbalanced. This one was, this first cell was actually up to like 3.78 volts where the, the final cells were at like 3.2. So the, the BMS is totally bad on this, not working, it's not shutting it off uh, at like the 10 volts where it should. So uh, now I know that <laughs> this battery is definitely shot. Another great use for this is for discharging your batteries for long-term storage. Typically with lithium iron phosphate, depending on the manufacturer, they usually recommend anywhere between 50 to 75% capacity for long-term storage. So keep that in mind. It's pretty simple and intuitive to use once you kind of wrap your head around it. It does come with some instructions that are very poorly translated from Chinese, but after reading through it a few times and, and kind of playing around with it, you can kind of get the gist of it, but I'll walk you through uh, the steps here in a moment. So let me just walk you around the tester here. On the back, we've got where we're gonna plug in the power cord that's supplied with it. It also does, uh, it can be powered from USB as well. On the left, you have, here's the diagram, you've got your multi-purpose USB port, which I, I would suspect this is a power out. All of these are inputs, so this is your uh, your main input that you're gonna use, but you also have a coaxial input as well, a DC 5.0 jack, and then you have a mini USB, a micro USB, and a USB-C. Unfortunately, the USB-C does not do USB-C PD, I have come to find out. Next, we have our screen that I'll show. I'll walk you through all these uh, different screens in a, in a minute. These two knobs are what you're actually gonna use to essentially turn on and off the device and set your wattage or your amps uh, current draw. You have a coarse knob here, and then you have a fine knob for making finer adjustments here. And then you have your one button that does everything. There's also a DC output here and something that says protection controlling signal output, which is this white box here that I'm not really sure what is for and the instructions don't give us any indication of what it's for as well. Now the voltage measurement range is zero to 200 volts and the current adjustable range is zero to 20 amps. Now out of the box, this thing is programmed to allow you to destroy it. So let me walk you through these menus really quick. The first screen, is gonna be in Chinese. So you just push the button once, it's gonna to go to the next screen, which is the exact same thing, but now it shows you everything in English. You see voltage, capacity and amp hours, energy and watt hours, and the accumulated time of the test. And then at the top right, you can see the current draw as it's happening in amps. And then you see the temperature, and then you have this basically uh, like an auto standby feature or a, or a auto off feature that you can adjust, but it's off right now. The next screen, I would use this or the fourth screen over the first screen or the second screen. And I'll tell you why, because on the first and second screens, we don't see the watts. This is rated for 150 watts. If you go over that, you can fry this. This just has a MOSFET chip inside here that's what's gonna do your current drain and then a big fan and heat sink that does a really good job of cooling it. But if you pull too much power, you will fry that MOSFET, so don't do that. The way we're gonna fix that and monitor that, I recommend you use either this third screen, which is gonna show your voltage and amp hour and amps up top. Now we have a meter that's gonna show us the watts as well as the amp hours, the watt hours, and the accumulated time. 
The fourth screen here is going to show you all the same information as the third screen, just in a different layout. Now, there's a couple settings you want to do to this before you start using it. The next screen, this is our backlight. You can change the time for backlight, but more importantly, this is set for a max voltage of 300 volts right now. If we triple press the button, you can see that now our voltage is going down. And now because it's set to go down, we can long press this button and bring this down. So I'm gonna bring this down to 200 volts because that's all this thing is rated for. And as we get closer, you can triple press it to fine tune it and now we're at 200 volts. This is the low voltage. You can set that if you wanna have an alarm go off. If you're testing like a single cell and you don't wanna uh, draw it, uh, uh, deplete it below what its uh, low voltage cutoff is. The next screen you have the max current draw, which I'm just gonna leave it 100, I'm not worried about current. But look at this, 185 watts is what this is set at from the factory. So I'm gonna triple press this and I'm gonna bring that down. If you did wanna raise this, a double press goes up, a triple press goes down. And then depending on where it's at now, so we're going down, so if I long press this, it's gonna go down. If I double press it, we just went back up. Now I can long press this and faster scroll up. But I wanna go down. I'm gonna set this, because this is rated for 150 watts, I'm gonna set this about 145. And there we are. And just single press to get out. Coming back to the main screen here as we follow along with the instructions, this is gonna show us, basically steps one through five are gonna tell us different things we can do to reset this meter. For example, if we long press this, this is gonna just erase everything back to zero. Maybe we only wanna clear the capacity. We can double click this. See, we have 0.22 amp hours. If we double click that, that just reset the amp hours. We can triple click it to reset the electric quantity data, whatever that is. So that was the watt hours. We can four click it to reset the time. That just reset, and again, just long press the whole thing, and that will reset everything. Testing the batteries couldn't be any easier. These bigger lugs here are, oh well all of these are inputs and I'm gonna go ahead and add some wire here so we can start testing batteries and I can show you how this thing works. Very importantly, before you plug in your load, make sure these two knobs are fully counterclockwise. Now we can go ahead and plug in our load. And you can see here on the screen, we're showing 13.2 volts. Let me get into a good screen here. Now, the way we're gonna check this, and you wanna do this slowly, we wanna monitor these watts here. I've got a 13.2 volt lithium iron phosphate battery hooked up. So we're gonna start with this uh, coarse knob here. We're just gonna slowly bring it up here, okay? Now we're going, we're at 40 watts now. We can crank this up. Okay, so we're at 114 uh, watts right now. We can use the fine adjustment here to, well, fine adjust it. Now because we set that wattage at 145 watts, look what happens once we get to 145 watts. Let's crank this up. Now we get an error. This just shut off. It just protected itself. If we don't set that lower than 150 watts or 150 watts, you can damage this. So now turn your knobs down, push the button. We're back to being able to test it. So that just protected us from destroying this. Now we can go ahead and crank up the knob again here. And typically, this is a 10 amp hour battery, so typically you'd wanna test it at like 2C, which would be two amps in this case. And we can just fine tune it here, get up to about two amps there, close enough. And now we can see we're pulling 26 watts. Uh, we're, we've pulled 11 amp hours out of it now. Our current is two amps and we pulled 1.3 or 1.4 watt hours out of it now and we've been going for a minute. These USB ports are really cool because maybe you have a uh, USB charging bank like this one. I actually bought this for 35 bucks at Love's Tru Truck Stop. Works great. I've got it plugged into the USB-A because again, it doesn't accept or it won't take USB-C PD, but it will take a USB-C input. So we can go ahead and plug this in. Again, make sure our knobs are down before we plug it in. We can see we've got five volts. And now we can start slowly bringing our current up. And there we go. So now we can test. This is supposed to be a 20,000 milliamp hour or 20 amp hour battery. We can test this and see 
One, you can see how much uh, current draw you can actually get out of it. This is rated for 20 watts, so we can boost this up and see if we actually get 20 watts out of it. So just use the fine knob here. Maybe hit this coarse one just a little bit. These knobs are really finicky, so you wanna, oh, and it just shut off. You wanna be really careful with it, but if we bring them back down, we should, uh, my, my battery protected itself, so I need to turn it back on. And then we can bring this coarse knob up, up again and see what kind of power we actually get out of it. And it looks like it wants to shut off uh, right around 17 watts or so. So I'm not getting quite what is advertised out of this, but this is a great tool to test things like that. You can also use this to test like your, your USB outlets that you can buy. Turn this on. This is a USB uh, QC 3.0 outlet that we're using right now. So you can see we got 4.97 volts. We can go ahead and crank this up here. See what kind of current we can get out of this. More watts. About 18 and a half now and it just shut off at about 18 and a half. Anyway, I just thought this was a really cool tool and I wanted to share it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Tube.